Good news first, the world's in great shape. We've got a civil war in Russia, government loyalists against ultranationalist rebels, and 15,000 nukes at stake. <sighs> Yeah guys, when I was playing uh, Call of Duty 4 as a teenager many many years ago, I never expected that cutscene to turn into actual real life events in Russia. But yes guys, I'm pretty sure that you've already heard the news, in today's video we're gonna be talking about the attempted military coup in Russia conducted by PMC Wagner and Evgeny Prigozhin, which happened literally yesterday as I'm recording this video. It was an absolute roller coaster because in one day we got to see Evgeny Prigozhin, the head of PMC Wagner, which is one of Russia's main forces in Ukraine, essentially do a U-turn and take all of his Wagner troops from Ukraine to Moscow on a so-called March of Justice. With Vladimir Putin even coming out with an address to the nation essentially calling Prigozhin and Wagner traitors that will be exterminated. After this, Wagner very quickly started taking control of many regions and cities in Russia and actually started getting closer and closer to Moscow. And then, at the end of the day, suddenly the Wagner chief Prigozhin decided to turn all of his troops around because apparently he came to an agreement with the Belarus uh, president Lukashenko to end the entire thing. And apparently things now are about to go back to business as usual except that Prigozhin is being sent to Belarus. <laughs> I have no fucking idea what is going on. So, hello Blazers, it is your boy Roman, your favorite neighborhood Russian. Hi guys, do stay, welcome to a brand new video, and in today's video guys, we're gonna be talking about the attempted military coup in Russia by PMC Wagner, and essentially guys, I'm going to try, I'm going to attempt to explain to you what happens, because honestly, none of this makes any sense. And as well guys, I'm gonna give you my personal feelings about this, my emotions that I was feeling when I was watching all of this stuff, because you know, it's kind of fascinating, you know, it's not every day that I get to see my country on the brink of civil war. Now thing is, I actually already tried to record a video about this yesterday and I was actually recording it mid-coup. I was losing my mind quite a little bit. However, now that the dust has settled, let's actually try to make some sense out of this. But before I talk about what happened, I need to quickly explain to you what Wagner is and who Evgeny Prigozhin is. Because I actually never really talked about them on my channel before because uh... If I speak, I am in, in big trouble in big trouble and i don't want to be in big trouble well yeah pretty much that, that was pretty much the reason but you know now this is kind of hard to avoid pmc wagner is a private military company a group of mercenaries if you will that is led by evgeny prigozhin a russian oligarch that is known to be very closely connected to vladimir putin and pmc wagner has actually existed for a while now they've been doing a bunch of operations in africa and syria and many other places in the world and a lot of people actually point out that wagner has been acting as russia's proxy in many of these conflicts throughout the years and now, during the special military operation in Ukraine, Wagner has become one of Russia's main forces in Ukraine. And ever since the start of this special operation, Russia has been sort of openly embracing their connection to Wagner, essentially promoting Wagner in propaganda advertisements and propaganda songs, essentially crowning them as heroes of Russia, as well as installing billboards all over Russia, essentially inviting people to join PMC Wagner and, you know, quote-unquote, defend the motherlands. Which is interesting, by the way, because funnily enough, according to the Russian law, Law, uh, private military companies and mercenaries are actually banned. So according to the Russian law, technically, PMC Wagner is not supposed to exist. However, it's Russia, so uh, anything is possible. Another thing that Wagner is known for in modern Russia is that a lot of the times, Wagner actually recruits people from Russian prisons to fight in Ukraine. But anyway, long story short, in the past few months, uh, Evgeny Prigozhin and PMC Wagner have been in a sort of a open confrontation and a conflict with the Russia's Ministry of Defense and the Russian Minister of Defense, Shaigu. Essentially, Prigozhin was really not happy with Russian military commanders and the amount of losses Wagner has suffered in Bakhmut, and also he claimed that the Ministry of Defense and Shaigu himself are not giving them enough ammunition, which created this classic video. Shaigu! Gerasimov! Где боеприпасы? So yes, this back and forth has been going on for a while now, Prigozhin at once claimed that he's going to leave Bakhmut completely and Wagner is like pulling out, then he did not actually do that, he also went on camera, he insulted Shaigu publicly multiple times, he actually went on camera as well and complimented a bunch of Ukrainian military generals and also said a bunch of things that are basically trying to disprove Russia's official narrative about, you know, the points of the special military operation in Ukraine and denazification and all that. Prigozhin basically came out saying that it's all nonsense and yes, 
yesterday, on June 24th, 2023, Prigozhin once again addressed the people and said that the night before, the Ministry of Defense and Shaigu actually hit Wagner positions. So this is all according to Prigozhin, right? And essentially, Prigozhin announced that Wagner troops, 25,000 men with guns, are now going to be turning around and heading towards Moscow on a so-called March of Justice in order to punish Shoigu and essentially bring take our country back. Vladimir Putin came out with an official address essentially calling Prigozhin a traitor and saying that this is a rebellion that will be essentially destroyed and that if anybody thinks about joining Wagner right now in this, there are actually you no know, traitors and it's treason. And long story short, within like 10 hours or so, Prigozhin was already controlling the city of Rostov, which is a huge large city in Russia. Then on they continued and they went into the city of Varonish. And what was really interesting as well, it seemed like the majority of troops and the police, you know, stationed in those Russian cities actually showed zero resistance to Wagner. And according to certain reports, by the end of the day yesterday, Wagner was already pretty close to Moscow and starting to close in on the Moscow region. And once again, then essentially suddenly, uh, Prigozhin came out with a statement essentially saying that he's turning his troops around and, you know, it's so dealt with and he came to a conclusion together with Belarus's president Lukashenko. Why is the president of Belarus the one negotiating this and discussing this when uh, Wagner tanks are literally on the way to Moscow? I don't know. I don't know, guys. <laughs> Maybe Putin just wanted to call in his older brother. But anyway, yes, apparently Wagner and the Russian government and Lukashenko came to some sort of an agreement, according to which, first of all, Prigozhin himself is being sent to Belarus, and I guess he's no longer like the head of Wagner or something. There's also going to be some readjustments in the uh, Ministry of Defense, apparently. And also, all the Wagner troops are going to be returning back to their positions, and essentially also all of the soldiers of Wagner that participated in this are actually pardons, and, you know, can just, you know, continue as they are. So it's essentially, I, th I feel like everybody's pretending that nothing Thing happens. And that's kind of the conclusion of this entire thing. Now, I'm pretty sure that for a lot of you guys, the question arises, what the fuck was this? <laughs> and quite honestly, I have zero clue. First of all, let's talk about my reaction, right? So when I was looking at this and I was seeing tanks apparently being on the way to Moscow and I was seeing Russian authorities like destroying roads in the Lipetsk region in order to stop Wagner troops from advancing, I was like, what the fuck is this? Or also, for example, <laughs> when I was looking at footage of tanks in the city of Rostov, Wagner troops were there on the streets and people were just you know regular civilians were kind of just like you know not taking it seriously whatsoever just kind of walking around and it was like it was like a game to people i don't know why but people were like walking around taking pictures with the tanks and everything even though putin literally came with an address a few hours before saying that these are traitors and terrorists essentially but whatever right and yeah essentially to be honest the entire day was a complete roller coaster because i did not think it was gonna end like this i thought it was actually over because troops were moving very very quickly and uh Putin even recorded a special emergency message, so from the outside it honestly felt to me like things were pretty serious and like there's actually some bad shit is actually about to start happening. The way it came to an end is just really weird for me as well, right? And when I was just looking at all this going down live, right, I was just thinking to myself like, dude, no, there is no way that Wagner is gonna take over Russia. Like there is simply no way. Here's the thing, right, I was getting a bunch of comments from Westerners and DMs saying, hell yeah, Roman, something great is happening, you know, you might be able to return home soon than you thought. And all I have to say, guys, uh, I don't really think so. Uh, especially if Wagner took over Russia, I don't really think that would mean that I can actually return home sooner now. I mean, it really seems to me like a lot of Westerners don't actually know what Wagner stands for and what they're like. Here's the thing, right? Wagner is not some sort of, you know, opposition force that is like against Putin that wants to march and, you know, take the country back or whatever. First of all, Prigozhin was created by Putin, right? And second of all, Prigozhin and Wagner, they're completely fine with what is going on in Ukraine, right? Their whole point is that, according to to them, the Ministry of Defense and, you know, the President, etc., are not going hard enough. And essentially, the whole idea here kind of was to, you know, sort of confront the establishment, try to set our own rules in a way or something, and then go back to Ukraine and really show them what for, you know what I mean? That's the whole point. Wagner is like not an anti-Putin or a pacifist organization, right? And I understand that a lot of people don't like Putin's Russia and what it stands for, right? And Putin doesn't offer Russia particularly great prospects for the future, right? However, I don't really think Russia's future under Wagner would be much better. In fact, it'd be much worse, I think. So, uh, yeah, I didn't 
didn't really get all these DMs from people saying that, you know, Roman, you're gonna be coming back home soon. So when I was looking at all these events, I was like, nah, man, this is like, it's not exactly a good choice, you know, Putin or Wagner. <laughs> and when I was looking at this stuff, I thought, this is insane. Like, this is pretty much what my parents probably felt when they were watching, like, the Soviet Union collapse. Or this is like what my parents felt in 1993, where uh, tanks were shooting at the White House in, in Moscow, right? Here's a point that I actually want to make, right? The thing is that this attempted military coup is actually a sign of something really big brewing in Russian society that I want to talk about. And that is that Russian propaganda amongst the, you know, special operation in Ukraine has created a sort of a new group of people that could be described as so-called turbo patriots, so like turbo Z patriots. But these are people who are essentially super Z, who think that, you know, Ukraine shouldn't exist, basically. And these are the people who support the special operation, right? However, they're actually mad at Putin and the Russian government because they think they're not going hard enough and they're not actually, like, fighting with all the power that Russia's got or whatever, right? So there's actually a huge amount of people now who believe that the sort of imperial conquest that Russia is on should continue, however, with a different leader. One that would be, you know, not as much of a, a diplomat, right? Because, you know, in these people's eyes, you know, Putin is a diplomat. And essentially, these people, they hang around all of these Z Telegram channels, which just post the most insane, like, Nazi shit, because they're basically given absolute leeway on what they can say, right? So, and actually, these people, they support Wagner and Prigozhin, and in their eyes, Prigozhin and Wagner are, like, the examples of, like, you know, true Russian patriots that are actually, you know, out there on the battlefield, like, doing doing their deed and not just sitting in the Kremlin and, you know, doing whatever. And a lot of these people would actually like to see Wagner take control in Russia. And here's the thing. Yesterday, all of these people, they were very, very active and they were very, very happy. And here's a good example, right? When Prigozhin actually canceled everything and turned all of his troops around, his official announcement of that got over 400,000 clown emoji reactions on Telegram. <laughs> This is absolutely ridiculous. And personally, right, I believe this is not that big of a group of people. It's just a very loud minority, right? However, in a sense, right, it's the minority that really counts. Because, uh, well, these are people who have, like, access to guns now. And uh, they can do pretty much whatever they want, right? So, essentially, in a weird way, what the Russian government started has created a sort of a new wave of, like, imperialistic Russian chauvinism that is actually more extreme than what the Russian government is doing. And therefore, these people are unhappy and they want to take it to another level. And basically yesterday when the school was going on, this entire, you know, group of people really, really wanted Wagner to take control. And uh, I think the fact that something like this is even possible and that these people who might actually have become dangerous to the Russian government now and who actually might protest, these people have guns now. So uh, yeah, it's a pecu peculiar situation that Russia has, you know, Putin has put himself into. And uh, I don't know. <laughs> I don't fucking know, man. But yeah, I guess it's over for now. And all I can say is that, you know, I I personally wouldn't really love to be a, you know, a citizen of a country governed by Wagner PMC. I don't know, like, the current government isn't great, but switching it for, like, an ultra-patriotic, ultra-Z version of itself, I don't know if I will, personally, and, uh, to be quite honest, yesterday felt like a day that has a lot of potential as far as, like, historical changes and what this day actually might bring, but in a way, I'm sort of glad that it ended, because honestly, when I was looking at this stuff, I was looking at military vehicles all throughout Russian cities. I'm not going to lie, I got worried. I got friends, I got family still in Russia, and uh, all of this could have potentially gone very, very ugly. And uh, once again, you could say, but yes, you know, the weakening of Russia or whatever, or some sort of power struggle, it's all a benefit for Ukraine. Maybe, but I don't exactly think that having Wagner run Russia is a benefit for Ukraine. <laughs> and it's definitely like a complete nightmare for the Russian people. So uh, in a weird sense, I guess I'm okay with the way it ends. But uh, I think it would be dumb to say that, you know, possibly nothing like this would ever happen again. But, you know, time will tell. So, uh, and I guess Another important thing that I forgot to mention is that this entire thing is just a huge blow for Putin, for his reputation. We've seen what Wagner has done. We can see that there's issues on the defensive side, and I don't think Putin looked particularly great and like a strong leader in this particular situation. And also, this sets a sort of a precedent, which, is, uh, which makes things a lot more serious. What do I have to say? Yesterday was one of the most insane days of my life. I was like having a fucking panic attack throughout the whole day. And really, once again, all this did to me is just show that life is absolutely surreal and that anything is possible and that absolutely nothing makes sense. But anyways, guys, yeah, I guess this is going to be pretty much it for today's video, though. I hope you guys did enjoy it. If you guys did, then please make sure to slap the like on it. As well, guys, if you want to support my channel additionally, then you could go over to the link down in the description, become a YouTube member. It's a way to monthly donate to me. It's basically the best way to support me. And yeah, guys, that is going to be pretty much it for today's video, though, and I will see you guys in the next one. Peace.